Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Wait a minute. That sound. That soundy sound. That sounds... Broken. He broke a deck! He broke a deck! Ah! <laughs> no! Or I Make figured out something Make fun to play! Stop! He's really dramatic. Turn it off! I'm trying to play! I mean, I say that a lot, but... Then again... Yeah, this, uh... I mean, just look at that go. Just, uh... Yeah. Maybe... Maybe I should feel bad. I, I don't know. It's... Yeah, it is still going. Boy, that is, yeah, that's still going there. Yeah, it's still going. I mean, this was playing a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, you might be onto something. Not again! Not again! Danger Fluffle Light Sworn Synchron Speedroid Clown Blade. Let's do it! I arrange these cards in a way that is easier on the eyes and also in a way that is easier to talk about. So let's just get right into this. Starting with the Synchron Engine. Three Quick Draw Synchron, one Satellite Synchron, three Tuning, and three Cool Bolt Hedgehog. Cool Bolt Hedgehog Special Summons itself from your graveyard if you have a tuner on the field. And once you know what the spell I was just talking about, not only does it mill a card, oh, but it adds a tuner. What? And Quick Draw Sync Run will get that Cobalt Hedgehog right into the graveyard for that, uh, you know, uh, Needle Fiber Link Cross combo that everybody loves. So um, the only thing I will note here about this top row of cards is that you can play two Satellite Synchron for the Marcher combo, but you don't need to. If you mill Satellite Synchron, it's not the end of the world. If you're worried about milling it, by all means, search it with tuning so you don't mill it. But just like the deck before where I wasn't playing Satellite Synchron, this deck right now doesn't need Satellite Synchron. It's, it's a cool bonus, but it doesn't need it. Um, the last incarnation of this deck was playing Jet Synchron. I figured out a way to play this deck without Jet Synchron. Uh, you add a Satellite Synchron and you don't even need that. It's, it's crazy. The reason why is because most of the time when you're making your level eight synchros, you're not using Mally in your level two tuner. And, you're, and most of the time you're not even going to march her like I'm saying, you can go into it. It's a nice move, but you don't need to. Uh, uh, I find myself making my level 8 synchros most of the time with a Minerva, a Lumina, and a Hedgehog. That's just what ends up happening. I abuse Lumina with Gen X Ally Birdman, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, just like the last incarnation of the deck, this does not need Satellite Synchron. It's a cool card to have. You can search it. It enables Marcher, all that good stuff, but it is not completely necessary. The, the, the core of the deck is being a Light Sworn deck, which is why it's called Light Sworn. The thing is though, there's not very many Light Sworn cards because I'm already playing the best ones. You could argue for Wolf, you can argue for JD and all this other stuff, and those are great cards. But for this deck, these are the only good ones. These cards just mill, add, mill some more, and summon, and, and, and that's it. You know what I mean? And summon from Graveyard at that. Summon your tuner from Graveyard at that. So really good stuff. Now, speaking of tuners, a level three tuner, another level three tuner that you take advantage of in this deck is Gen X Ally Burn Bam. Like I was talking about a second ago. So you will bounce your danger monsters and uh, take advantage of using those again, <laughs> which aren't once per turn, which is great. You can bounce your own Quick Draw Synchron, use Quick Draw Synchron again, um, and you can bounce your own Lumina, which is the main thing. Bounce your own Lumina and abuse that bitch. If you open up any decent hand with this deck in a Gen X Ally Birdman, it's gonna be even more nutty. Because bouncing that Lumina, getting another discard, when Lumina can discard any card, any card, not monster, Quick Draw's monster, Lumina's card, so you can discard your toy vendors and all that stuff off of Lumina. Crazy good stuff. Plus, Gen X Ally Birdman is a level three, so you can go into Le Bayer. It's a level three, so you can go into Dante. And it's a tuner, so you can replace it, or sub you know substitute it for Minerva, so you can make your level eight synchros in the way I was discussing a little bit ago. Next up, you have your Fluffle Engine, okay? Toy Vendor is not once per turn. I mean, Bear is, Wings is, but Toy Vendor is not, okay? It's effect to be able to, you know, discard a card and mill a card is, but it's effect when it hits the graveyard to just add a card, 
not once per turn. And when it comes to the fluff engine in this deck, I really like playing two wings. I like the higher chance of milling it to see those extra cards and having that extra level three or being able to hit. Like if you if you activate Vendor's effect and you hit a Fluffle, summon that Fluffle every single time. Build to a dread, get the wings in the graveyard, wings combo after, stuff like that. Toy Vendor is insanely good in this deck, guys, because any card that you're discarding, basically, I mean, it wants to be in the graveyard. It does, I mean, if you're discarding it, you want it to be in the graveyard. Whatever you're milling most likely wants to be in the graveyard. I mean, because look at this deck, unless you're milling Illumina, but a lot of the time, if you're milling Illumina, for example, and you already have Illumina in hand, you, and you didn't have a Light Sworn target in grave, it actually unbricked you doing that. So Toy Vendor is just really busted. Toy Vendor works with the Danger Monsters perfectly all of that. Um, Toy Vendor works with Minerva perfectly. Once again, the other Light Sworn monster that we play because let's just say your mill is a Minerva. Well, guess what? That's a good mill because you get to mill again. Let's see if the other one, let's see if the next mill is a better mill. And like I was just saying, that mill for Minerva might have just unbricked you if you've already seen Lumina. Really good stuff. Like, uh, I don't know why more people aren't playing Toy Vendor in mill decks and stuff because it's not once per turn and it gives you a free summon, it, it gives you a discard, it's, it, it, it lets you draw if you have wings in your grave. It's just really good. And speaking of the danger monsters, I'm playing one of each of the good dangers. Um, I did have Juku Cabra in here once as well just to have another uh, quick draw like effect, you know, but uh, it doesn't really need it, um, especially because you have tuning to search quick draw and gives you a mill anyways to get you started. Tuning really, really helps this deck get started, guys. It gives you your tuner uh, for your uh, needle fiber play and mills a card, which helps keep you going. Um, and it's a spell card that adds a deck thins. It gives you, it's, it's just really good. I really like tuning. I even play in Cyber Dragons. You guys know that. But yeah, I play the dangers essentially for the same reason why I play quick draw, um, a summon, and a discard. Because with all of these cards, you want them in the graveyard. And if you're not milling them into your graveyard, you might have drawn them and being able to get them out of your hand, yeah. Then next up I play the two good speed roids, um, Terra Top and Taka Tamborg, because if you open up Terra Top, that's instant uh, Dante, mill three, you probably just milled good, unless you didn't, but if you did, you probably just won, because <laughs> um, I'll, I'll open up like all garbage and a charge of light brigade, get a good mill and just win, or I will open up all garbage, a terror top, get a good mill and win. Just like the last incarnation of this deck, guys, it is a luck-based, very luck-based mill deck. It's a combo deck, but it's luck-based because it is a mill deck. If you get good mills, then you're gonna end good. If you open decent but didn't get any good mills, you're, you're going you're going to end decent. And if you open bad and didn't get any mills, then you just bricked. Stuff like that. But if you open good and you get good mills, you, you end so retarded busted. And this deck summons like 8,000 times a turn. The replays with this deck took so long to get, I didn't even feel like getting anymore. Even in the simulator, just testing hands was a nightmare because this deck actually has too many things that it can do. So many that sometimes I screw up my own combos. <laughs> it's like it's, it just it has too many things that they can do. Unless your opponent ends with that, you know, union uh, carrier, you can't summon from the extra deck crap, then yeah, of course you can't do anything. Or if they're playing domain monarchs and end with domain lock first, yeah, you can't do anything. But here's the thing, as far as being able to combo summon a million times per turn, end with a million negates, all that stuff, this deck does that. It does it pretty well, if it doesn't brick just like a lot of other decks. Who knows? Moving on though, I play two Destiny Hero Malicious. Um, it's really just an extra monster. If you do make a level eight synchro with it, great. Now, sometimes I do. Most of the time though, I use it and make Skull Dread. That's basically what I do with it most of the time. Um, and then uh, same with the um, Perform Ages. Um, I mean, just one uh, juggler, search the one clown. Try not to draw both of them. Zephyros, uh, Zephyros, um, you know, you can bounce a card from your field to the hand and summon it from the graveyard. Good stuff. Um, those cards pay life points to summon themselves from the graveyard. Um, so you play the Thousand Blades. I play Thousand Blades. You can cut it. Um, I play Thousand Blades because when this does go off, it's really great. It gives you a free monster, another free monster, and a level four at that to be able to go into Minerva. Um, and if you haven't made Dante, and you have like two, like, like, let's put it this way, two level threes, make Dante. Two level fours, make Minerva. Mill. Either way, mill. It's a mill deck. Then I play one C Archiver. Um, this is a level three for Dante. Perfect stuff. Level three with the, you know, Hedgehog and Minerva. Level eight Synchro. Good stuff. Um, it's a water for Dragite. This this card just has a lot, uh, a lot of synergy in the deck. Um, you, you're always uh, making Skull Dreads. You need all three of the Skull Dreads that you see. You really do. Uh, so therefore, you're always summoning to zones that Skull Dread points to. Uh, C Archiver's always live. Um, it's a really, really good card. I like it a lot. And the last card in the main deck is Dot Scraper. That's it. So uh, to explain that again, it's just your Synchron engine, your Light Sworn engine, plus, you know, Gen X Ally Bird Band, which bounces all kinds of useful cards back to your hand to be able to reuse. And then your Fluffle engine, which is your Mill engine, Discard engine, plus a Draw engine. 
Um, Danger Engine, which are some starters, you know, discard stuff, plus they let you draw cards and do things. Um, your Terror Top Engine, your Speedroid Engine, I should say, which lets you mill. And then you have all this junk that you want to mill. Um, including an engine in itself, which is the Clown Blade engine, which you know let, give, gives you an extra summon on top of things that you want in the graveyard to pay life points to summon. Yeah, it's just it's a kind of a hodgepodge of different shit. Now to the extra deck for the level eight synchros, I just play Boral Savage and Dragites because they say negate stuff. They're easy to make. They say negate stuff. Fair enough. Coral Dragon. This card is actually amazing because you can, you know, discard cards, destroy things, um, which is, you know, it has a lot of synergy in the deck, but it's also a water. So that works with Dragites, and also, um, if you send it for a Synchro Summon, or, I mean, it is a tuner, so you can use it for, you know, a Synchro Summon, of course. It's a level 6 tuner. Works with um, Hedgehog. You do that all the time. You'll make this with your uh, Lumina and your Minerva, and then you will use Hedgehog, draw a card. Or you can make Coral Dragon and use that Coral Dragon to make Skull Dread and draw a card. Either way, Coral Dragon really helps, you know, bring the deck together. And then I actually play another level 6 Synchro in Charge Warrior. The reason why is because it also lets you draw a card, like Coral Dragon, but right when it's summoned, and it's something that is not a tuner, but you could make into a tuner with Marcher. Comes in handy with Hedgehog, once again. It really, really, really does. And then I play a Hyper Librarian, because you can make Hyper Librarian, and the Hyper Librarian says draw cards. That's good. <laughs> it's always good. Plus, like I explained in the Cyber Dragon deck profile video, um, Librarian says if a monster is synchro summoned, draw a card. Not if you do, or not just if your opponent does not when, when it happens, period. So you essentially max C your opponent if they're playing a synchro deck. So yeah, yeah. if they're playing synchros and you know they're playing synchros, leave the uh, Librarian up and you won. And then yeah, um, Mar Marcher, because it's basically the best synchro in the game right now, <laughs> because you synchro summon it and then summon the tuner that you use for its synchro summon right back out, or a different tuner. It's freaking good. Um, now, Minerva, Levier, and Dante. Technically, it should be Minerva, Dante, Levier, but uh, to explain that simply, those two cards mill. And then when it comes to Levier, I mainly use it to abuse Quibble Hedgehog, because Quibble Hedgehog, it's not once per turn. As long as it's in the graveyard and as long as you have a tuner, you can summon that thing. It gets banished when it leaves the field. That's fine. Just summon it back out with Lumina, I mean, sorry, with Levier and abuse it. What I find myself doing the most, honestly, after summoning um, the Hedgehog off of Levier, is using that Hedgehog and Levier to go into another Dread to keep building my board or to use that at the end to make the Lusa to end the board. That's that's what I end up doing the most. Um, either way, that's that's what you do with the Xyz monsters. I only play those three Xyz monsters. Uh, two of them mill and one of them summons from the banish pile. You actually banish a lot in this deck. Um, you can't get Mally, even though you you know banish Mally, uh, but you can't get Mally with Levier, it's levels too high, but you can get um, the Perform Age, uh, you can get those Quibble Hedgehogs, and you can get the Fluffles that you banish. So you do banish quite a bit in this deck. Levier does come in handy a lot, specifically once again for Hedgehog, because Hedgehog Chog is easily abusable. Um, three Skull Dread because it's the best card in the extra deck. You need all three of them. You will make all three of them. This, this deck summons way too many times. The replays were terrible to get. I'm telling you, <laughs> like three Skull Dreads because like if your hands trash, you can't build to what you want. Just keep going, keep making dreads until you build to the cards, until you get the cards you need to, to make the board you want. It's that simple. Um, Lusa because that's how you want to end. You want to end with those extra negates. You know, Lusa's a great card. And then Needle Fiber and Link Cross because that combo is really good. We're Works with Marcher, um, summons from deck. I don't really know what to tell you. There are times where I will use um, Skull Dread uh, as the Link Cross target, you know, Link Cross material and get like four tokens. I have done that with this deck. Um, I don't usually do it, but it does come in handy. Link Cross is, I mean, it's good. I mean, you just, I just threw a bu together a bunch of different engines and it, it's pretty good. It's a lot of fun. Just not against floodgates. Speaking of floodgates and junk though, let's move on to the side deck, starting with Lila. I side two Lila because it's searchable, charge of light brigade, and destroys spells and traps, and it also mills. I like siding Lila. It's simple spell trap destruction, good against back row decks, you know, stuff like that. It's not good if, if they're playing Mystic Mind because, you know, you can't activate uh, monster effects, but um, that is what the other spell trap destruction's for. Moving on though, <laughs> um, Nibiru. Nibiru works with Dragite. It's a, it's a rock. It's, it's Nibiru. If you see it um, opening against your opponent, and they're playing a combo deck, it's good. If you don't see it, 
then it's not good. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, it, like Nibiru is Nibiru. It's a uh, literally a brick rock in your hand if your opponent doesn't summon a million times. But it's a good card. Next up, uh, three Galaxy Cyclone because this is a mill deck. You basically mill your whole deck. A lot of the times, I'll end with only two cards left in deck. So uh, Galaxy Cyclone. Uh, that's your spell trap destruction that you, that's okay to mill out and stuff. Um, then uh, evenly matched because it's evenly matched. And then I side some uh, Link monsters just for going seconds and stuff just for some extra, you know, board busting uh, material as well as a Black Rose Dragon for some extra board busting material just because I feel like siding it. I felt like siding it one day and, and it actually worked okay. You could take out Black Rose for whatever you want, but this deck makes level seven synchros easy. Sometimes I feel like playing the, the, the FA card, the level seven synchro that negates stuff because this makes level seven synchros really easy as well but the level weights are a little better. I've been showing some combos off, you know, throughout this video, showing uh, how infinitely long the hands go. It combos for a long time. It's a pretty good deck, it's a pretty fun deck. Is it the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh? No, but does it have a really high ceiling for something this thrown together? Yeah, it's actually got probably the highest ceiling in Yu-Gi-Oh or something like it because of how many times it does summon when it does go off. But once again, if you don't mill anything good, then you're not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Subscribe! <laughs>